So it's hard to believe that I have owned the Elantra GT N line for over 10 months now, and during this time, I've come across some things that I really dislike about the car. Now, some of those things are pretty minor, but some of them I think are actually fairly large problems with the Elantra GT. So today, let's take a look at my top five dislikes with the Elantra GT N line. Now, I've somewhat ranked these from the least problematic or the least dislike to the most problematic or most dislike with the Elantra GT. Make sure you guys stick around to the end because I have a few honorable mentions that I'd like to throw in for this car. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with number five. So let's go ahead and start with number five, and that is the interior alert slash chime that happens on the dash when the temperatures are at or below 39 degrees Fahrenheit. So anybody who experiences a winter climate like seen here will know exactly what I'm talking about, especially if they end up parking in a garage overnight, because every time you leave that garage and the temperatures are at or below 39 degrees, the chime happens uh, basically 30 seconds to a minute after leaving the garage. Now the only reason this is annoying is because every time it happens, it gets you to look down at the dash and think something is wrong, but in reality, it's just cold outside. So number four on the list is the interior lock button position on the car. In case you guys are unfamiliar with the Elantra GT, the interior lock button is actually in the center console or the center dash area on the car. So that is the only interior uh, lock or unlock button located on the car. There are none located anywhere else other than the key fob, of course. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate the problem that I have with this button. So the car is, of course, unlocked right now, and there are no unlock buttons located on the door. It is just this button located right here on the dash. So say you want to go ahead and lock your car. Do so by using the button on the back. Now, if you have the two press unlock um, enabled with the door handles, which you can switch in the menus in the car, say you only unlock the driver's side door and you open it up and forget that you need to get something either out of the uh, rear doors, which are currently locked because you only unlock the driver's side door. Well, you can't just hit your button here on the door because there's no button. You have to reach in here and reach to press that button just so you can open the rear doors. So I realize you could just switch the two button press um, unlock on the handle to unlock all the doors with one button press, um, but there are some other scenarios when you uh, want to either lock or unlock the car that the center button either does not allow you to do or makes it more difficult to do so, like I just demonstrated there. Um, so that is another minor complaint about the Elantra GT, and that might be more of something to do with the Euro design that this car has. Um, I'm not sure over in Europe or other parts of the world um, whether more cars come with just one century, central located button like that, but um, overall I would rather prefer to have um, the unlock button located on each of the front doors, just like my last Elantra GT was actually. So number three on my list is actually the OEM tires that come on this car, and those are the Hankook All Season um, tires that come with the dual clutch transmission cars. Now these tires are found on the uh, GT N-Line dual clutch as well as the Elantra Sport uh, sedan from 2017 through 2020 as well. Now the problem I have with these tires is not related to their grip levels, although they are a mediocre all season at best, but they're actually prone to cracking um, very prematurely in their life. There's people that have driven on these tires for only like 10 or 20,000 miles um, over the course of one to two years and have premature cracking that is a safety hazard. So that is why I really recommend if you guys have the OEM hand cooked tires to get rid of them as soon as possible because not only are they not that great of a tire, they're really no noisy on the road and everything like that, but they really are a safety hazard um, depending on the batches that you get with those tires. So overall, I just think the hand cooked tires are not a great choice for this car. So I'd really like to see um, a better quality tire come on these cars from the factory. So that leaves us at number two on the list, and that is the heating abilities of the 1.6 liter turbo that's found in these cars. Um, and this is something that I've actually come across very recently, um, ever since the temperatures are regularly below freezing. Um, I didn't know this was actually a real problem with this motor, but um, doing some research on the forums and uh, through my own experiences now with a warranty claim, I have found that the 1.6 liter turbos are kind of problematic uh, when it comes to being able to heat up in a timely fashion, 
especially with the interior blower motor running um, on the higher speeds. So when it comes to my experiences with this problem, I found that the temperature gauge on the dash uh, was actually dropping um, when I was sitting at stoplights and such when the blower motor was probably above 60% or so on the interior. So I thought this was a problem. The gauge would go all over the place um, during my 10 mile commute and um, it would barely get up to operating temperature by the time I got home or to work within those 10 miles. So I thought there was something definitely wrong with the car. Um, so I took it to the dealership. They concurred that something was weird with the car. So they went ahead and uh, warrantied a thermostat and bled the cooling system. And I am a little disappointed to say that the problem is basically the same as it was before they replaced the thermostat. So, so I'm not exactly sure why this car has such a hard time uh, warming up in the uh, winter time or colder temperatures, but um, it is a problem because I have come across some forum posts um, for basically every car model with this engine in it, which is like the Tucson, the Kona, as well as the Elantra Sport sedan. I found posts surrounding all of those cars of people complaining of the exact same problem. Um, it really depends on how cold it gets in your area because I did not notice that this was a problem when the temperatures were 35 or 40 degrees outside. It was really when the temperatures started to get into the 20s that I noticed that um, the car was acting a little weird. So if the temperatures aren't that cold, then I don't think this is a problem and I didn't notice anything that was wrong with the car. But if you regularly have a winter climate that is in the 20s or lower, um, you'll definitely see some side effects of this problem. And I have to mention that my car sits in the garage at night, so the temperatures only get down to the mid 40s or so. Um, if your car sits outside regularly, this should be even more of a problem for you. So it's definitely something I would take into consideration uh, when purchasing this car for a long term and you experience colder climates regularly. So last but not least, I'm sure you guys can guess what my number one complaint about the Elantra GT N-Line is, and that is the dual clutch transmission. And I'm not saying the dual clutch is awful in this car, it just has its quirks at times and some people have better experiences than others. Um, depending on their car. It seems like every car and the way you drive it is just different in terms of uh, how the seven speed acts. Uh, my car has been pretty good so far, so I'm thankful for that, but it still at times has its quirks. Um, it is the seven speed dual clutch that Hyundai and Kia owners are very familiar with, um, and many have had bad experiences or replacements with, so uh, really just comes down to the car but overall when it comes to the seven speed dual clutch it's great when you drive it in sport mode and in manual mode the the shifts are very quick considering it's more of an economy transmission and an economy car for that matter um, for the price point at about twenty thousand dollars after discounts um, i really don't think you can get um, more car for the money in terms of the dual clutch you just have to be accepting when it comes to the uh, dual clutch transmission that it it acts weird. Um, the uh, computer control for the transmission um, sometimes doesn't know what it's doing. So if you're okay driving it in sport mode and manual mode all the time, this is a great transmission. Um, but the more you leave it in normal mode and uh, to do the shifting itself, it definitely can get quirky, jerky, and just overall um, not know exactly what it wants to do sometimes. So a couple honorable mentions for dislikes about this car is the base stereo for the cars without the tech package is fairly weak. So if you guys like your audio, you'll definitely probably have to uh, modify either this system or go with the tech package cars. Another honorable mention is the fact that on the driver's side door, the mirror controls are not illuminated at night you only get your window controls are illuminated that's something that i just noticed that is kind of like a cost cutting measure that i think my last elantra gt actually had all the buttons backlit or illuminated so you could see what you're doing at night and lastly that is the equipment differences by the country with the elantra gt or the i30 um, as you guys know i put the red seat belts from canada and korea in this car and they fit perfectly but why is that not something that the United States got? You know, we love our colored seat belts too, so why can't we get that stuff? Um, there's just certain things with the Elantra GT uh, that other countries get that we don't get here in the US and vice versa. So um, some of the equipment differences is just something that uh, is just a minor complaint that I have about this car in general. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the top five things I hate about my Launch GTN line. Overall, I am not bashing this car by any means, and I still love it. It is a great value in terms of a sporty, compact hatchback, and it's just too bad that they do not sell this car in the United States or Canada or Korea even more for that matter. So, so if you guys live in Europe and Australia, you guys are extremely lucky to still have the i30 hatchback. Um, because it is a great sporty compact hatchback and you really cannot ask for a better value for the money as the uh, car prices just continue to skyrocket so overall I am very happy with this car overall and there's definitely a lot more things I like about it than I dislike about it so please keep that in mind when I went over the top five things I hate about this car so I hope you guys enjoyed it once again. If you guys own this car or an Elantra GT in general, let me know what you guys think of my top five dislikes and uh, let me know yours as well. If you guys enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It definitely helps me out. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.